Well, so I've had my 4066R now for about 50, 50 plus hours, right around there. It is 0.1 hour away from hitting the big 200. Thought it was a good time to give you my thoughts on my ownership so far. I've owned it since September or October of last year, can't recall for sure. But, uh, you know, I do have a lot of tractors that I, I use and I try to uh, at least put a little bit of time on all the tractors that I get in stock that I have for sale. So helps keep the hours down on my own personal tractors, but uh, still have a lot of seat time in here. So I want to give you my thoughts. It's mostly good. There's a little bit of bad too. We'll get into it now. And if you haven't done so yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button below. Read the description as well, right underneath the video here. Links to Amazon, links to my website, all sorts of stuff for your tractor. Can help you with a tractor, an attachment, put together a whole package, delivery and financing too. Okay, so let's get this out of the way. I've only had one issue with this tractor since I've owned it, which was at 140 some hours, I think it was, if I remember right. And it was gonna be with the air ride seat. Just stopped working one day, had no idea what was going on. Pulled down the shroud here, checked all the wire connections that I could find. Didn't see anything wrong, but it just would not turn on. The pump would just not turn on and fill back up. So, you know, talked to Greenmark. It ended up being a, a wire that I just didn't find. It had broke underneath here. Don't know how. I looked it up online, and it does seem like that's not the most uncommon issue to have happened uh, with these air ride seats. But uh, mine was just in a location that I just didn't originally find did end up being a broken wire that's all it was got that thing re, uh, re-spliced together and good to go that's the only issue i've had with this tractor my biggest gripe with this is that i use this for the loader a lot and i'm using the pallet forks probably more than anything else and i cannot see very well down there i can't see what's on there you know and especially when the air ride seat here wasn't working and i was hunkered way down in here then i really had to like reach up and, and lean forward and so when I'm sitting back in the regular position, it's very difficult to see. And to be fair, my 3046R wasn't super great on visibility either, but I feel like this is maybe even a little bit worse. Um, I don't know for sure, but that's my biggest gripe with this is visibility there. I have to lean forward, reach forward like this to be able to see what's going on down there with the pallet forks or with the bucket on it. Okay, well this complaint is actually about the loader joystick, but I'm propping this door open, which makes me think of another complaint, which I've mentioned recently, but there is no uh, piston. There's no assist to keep this door open right here. I'm standing here physically holding it open. Otherwise, watch this. It just closes. I find that to be annoying. It's not the end of the world, but anyway. I'm annoyed about the loader joystick, okay? And um, mainly it's because, again, when I'm using the pallet forks, you know, I really want to fine tune. I just have to make small adjustments uh, to get forks leveled out. And I am working with some very long, 60 inch forks, okay? And so if you think about it, you know, if every, if this is the base of the pivot point right here, when you, when you move this, right here, it's not moving very much. But when you're way out here, you know, a little movement here is a big movement out here. And so I think that's part of the problem, but, um, I wish that it was a little bit more uh, able to feather it, you know? So I wish there was more fine-tuned capability. I mean, I'm probably nitpicking because it's, it's not, I mean, I can do it plenty well. I just wish I had that micro adjustment there. And that leads into the next one. Okay, so we'll scroll through the dash here. This is the engine hours, ground speed, obviously not going anywhere. Vehicle hours, I, can somebody tell me what that means? It's always less than the engine hours, but it's different than the PTO hours. I, I don't really know what that one means. Uh, PTO hours, obviously not used very much in the PTO. Okay, so we're getting to where uh, my next sort of gripe is, but not, not real gripe. So, um, and it's kind of self-induced. And so at 38% right now for the soot level, it's been, uh, let's see, four hours, I guess, since the last regen. Okay, so I have gone through regen twice now in, um, what's it, you know, the 50, 60 hours that I've had it. Okay, and so in and of itself, that's that's not too bad. You know, that's every 40, 50 hours. So I think I'm causing it to go into regen more at that lower end range there, the 40 or 50 hour interval versus the 60, 70, 80 to 100 hour interval because of the fact that I'm running this at lower engine speeds, lower RPMs um, on a more regular basis. And the reason for that is again, I'm using it for loader work a lot with the pallet forks. And when I have it at a lower throttle, you know, lower RPMs, then I can get more of that fine-tuned control 
on the pallet forks, okay? So versus when it's at a high RPM and that response is, you know, the pump, the, the hydraulic system is really flowing fast at that point. So if you have your engine throttle, your RPMs down lower, then you're gonna be able to get more of that fine tune adjustment, fine tune, you know, um, feathering motion with the loader joystick. So not really an issue, well, it's not an issue with the tractor, it's just an, um, it's a matter of fact with how I'm using it that it's gonna regen more often. So that being said, the regen in and of itself is not an issue. This is not a concern for me. It's something that you can still use the tractor and I have used the tractor whilst going through regen. It'll simply tell you to increase the engine RPMs up above 1500 minimum. That way it can build up enough heat and build off or burn off the uh, soot that's built up in there. Going in and out of a cab is a little bit more effort than an open station, you know, where you can just hop right off at least me, just hop right off, you know, kind of having to get in and out of the cab, open and close the door, wash my head for the mirror, wash my head underneath here. You know, I'm six foot three, six foot two and three quarter, but I'm gonna round up for as long as I can. I'm sure I'll start shrinking at some point, okay? But six foot three, you know, it's always a trade-off with a cab, right? You know, you gotta be more careful in the woods. You have your overhead clearance for getting in, you know, a door like this, eight foot, in case you're wondering. Um, you know, again, the getting out, in and out all the time, the extra cost. There's a lot of things you need to consider when you're going to get a cab, you know, but really love it, especially in the wintertime, um, summertime, you know, as well, if you have air conditioning like this one does. But it's just some extra effort there. I get on and off of my tractor a lot, again, because out here I do a lot of uh, work with the pallet forks and attachments. And so sometimes I got to get out and adjust them, move them around, this and that and the other thing, you know. So... This is something to consider if I'm going to pick apart something that's going to be on the list. You know, so first and foremost, what I do love about this tractor is going to be just the simple power of it. You know, again, the 66 horsepower, you know, the most engine horsepower and therefore most PTO horsepower that you're going to have in the four series. Now, I will say loader capability, loader lift capacity is going to be the same no matter, you know, which model it is in the four series. And you know, I just absolutely love the lift capacity. It's such a huge, dramatic difference over the 3R series, my 3046R that I had, which was roughly 1,600 pounds to full height, where this is roughly 2,400 pounds to full height. You'll see um, a few different varying um, measurements as, as far as how, how high they'll lift or as far as how much they'll lift, if it's right at the base of the loader or further out, that kind of thing. But that's an apples to apples comparison there. So, you know, it's additional, an additional 800 pounds more. So 50% more going from the 3R series to the 4R series. That's substantial. That's the kind of power that I needed. Next thing I love is gonna be the width of this tractor. It's very naturally stable compared to my 3046R. You know, the one series, two series, three series really feel a little tippy side to side. You can get wheel spacers, you can put duels on that kind of thing to overcome that. Uh, put liquid ballast in all sorts of things to lower your center of gravity, but you get to the four series and you finally start to feel Naturally stable side to side even front to back with a it's almost like it's self ballasting There's definitely you got to put about 2,500 pounds of, of ballast on the back end here for a minimum requirement when you're using the front end loader But you just kind of start to feel a little bit more comfortable um, With the tractor as it naturally sits so one of the other great things that I love about the tractor is really gonna be the good visibility. Besides my gripe up there on the front of the, um, the tractor with the loader and using it for pallet forks, you know, you can have really good visual clearance right down here in front of your feet, even inside uh, the wheels and the tires down here, you know, easily really see right along the base, the whole perimeter of the tractor to see where you're going, where you're at. Uh, I guess if I did have a gripe, I don't know why they can't put a little sunroof in these four series tractors, you know? Give me a little sunshine in here, come on. And then the last thing that I do wanna mention is the fact that this is a really quiet cab. Whether it's insulated well, uh, rugged and, and rigidly strong, it's just very quiet when I have the machine on, you know? And so, you know, microphone is inside the tractor right now. It's at idle, I'll go ahead and rev it up. But this is, I mean, this is really, you know, for a tractor, this is quiet. That's that full wide open throttle there. You know, about half throttle right there, um, about 17, 1800 RPMs, and then back down to idle right here. So a very quiet application. You know, you can turn your radio on and actually hear it. Um, you know, there's turned up not quite halfway, you know, but uh, so you can hear very well in here. Shoot, you can even, I've been on the phone in here many times um, without issue. So. 
very quiet, unlike some cabs that are a, a noisy chatterbox, and uh, you can still hear a lot of hydro whine and everything else. Not so much in this cab here. And I, I say the same thing about the 3Rs. I got a lot of 3R tractors that I've had and driven, and I feel the same way about those as well. Well, thanks so much for watching and following along. Again, hit that subscribe button below. You know, I've got a lot of good videos on here, always putting more out as well. Gonna be trying out these attachments here before too long. You have an electric spreader right here, adjustable from five foot to 45 foot. Comes with everything you need. It's obviously quick hitch compatible here too. Little wiring harness and a controller. Run it right up front, plug it in, just some gator clips right onto your battery terminal there. Uh, over here we do have the big tool rack. You can see there's the sprayer in here and also the boom. This is a 140 inch boom, so great for food plots, spraying your lawn, whatever application you might have. So thanks again for watching. Make sure you read the description as well. Go to Good Works Tractors, check out the Amazon store. Until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.